What's going on, everyone? How y'all doing today? This is Puck U coming at you on this Wednesday, March 27th. It's Why Lose Sports NHL Wagering Show. I'm Mar- I'm Mar- Mike Burns, joined by Why Lose NHL Handicapper Les Victory. Both of us are recovering from a little bit of a heart condition last night as the unstoppable Nashville Predators picked some sweet, sweet cherries in our max bet spot last night. Les, how you doing today, buddy? Honestly, I it's been a it was a long night for me. I mean, it was a long, stressful night uh, for I think most of the people in the channel <laughs> that were tailing that that max bed spot. It was also on the ladder it, it, that you know uh, it, it got busted up last night. But uh, it was the hard way of doing business. Or was it last ever? Night. You know, it's it's never fun when you're playing catch up all night, especially when you got some good good money on the line. And uh, luckily, they, they were able to do it. And my game plan executed kind of what I was hoping how that game would play out. It just took a lot longer for it to get there. You know, I knew the minute that they got one on uh, what's his name, Pagarin or Pagarin or whatever his name is, something like that. I just kind of felt like that was okay. Yes. You know, and he made some really good saves in the first period. Uh, he played well. The second two for the most, like, he, he played really well for a guy that uh, hasn't played since January 10th on a back-to-back spot for Vegas, uh, you know, against a red hot Nashville team. It seemed like it was a absolute no brainer to take Nashville in the spot. But with that being said, it's certainly, brought anxiety to the next oh. level but we did get it done Bernsey, and that's all that matters it's like golf you could have the ugliest hole in one in the world off of the fucking cart girl's forehead and in the hole and at the end of the day it's a one on the scorecard there are no pictures on scorecards and thank god for this one because uh you know it wasn't a pretty one but at the end they're all the same yeah, she definitely made us sweat, man. Nashville went down 3 nothing, and I was with you, right? Like, once Nashville got on the board and it was 3-1, I'm like, let's go. Here it comes. But then, dagger in the heart, Vegas comes back before the end of the second, goes back up 4-1, and then it was all Nashville from there. Yossi with the game winner in overtime. That helped us parlay uh, with uh, Forsberg and Yossi anytime points over here. Um, over in the Washington game, we gave out our Washington comes over with the OT win against Detroit. Gave out Ovi to find the back of the net. He was held off the sh- uh, score sheet yesterday. Um, and in that Florida and Bruins game, we we had some action in there. Pastronaut gets over the hundred point mark. Marchand adds an assist. Gave out the over. Boston was glad to help us out with that four three. So we had we had some movement yesterday. We had some mojo going our way. Oh, definitely, definitely. And it just felt like we were losing all night because every game was falling behind and every game we were, we had money on to, you know, it just didn't seem to be working for the first couple of periods. So it's one of those nights be like, oh my God, this could be the worst night in, in my sports betting life, <laughs> but you got to have faith. You got to believe in, in the process. You got to believe that, you know, the, the research pays off more than it doesn't. Obviously Carolina was a little bit of a shocker. Yeah, losing. I didn't see that coming. I mean, it was 2-1. They scored two empty net goals, so it wasn't a 4-1 game. I mean, they had 40 shots. Nadelkovic played the best game of his fucking life. And, uh, you know, like I busted up our ladder, which isn't a big deal. You know, it's not a big deal. But we did want to see that one. I did I did want Carolina to win that one. I think we had them as one of the parlays, too, on the card, too. And it just, it just didn't work. But you look at the amount of underdogs that won yesterday. It's kind of crazy. Pittsburgh. Boston was an underdog. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jersey was an underdog. Oh, yeah, we were, baby. Chicago was an underdog, which was on the card. Underdog bet of the night. Easy money. Montreal <laughs> beat the Avs. At home. At home. Like, it's just a tough, a weird night in. So somebody actually messaged me. He's like, yo, what are your thoughts on Dallas tonight? I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it the way the night's been going i don't like it i don't i don't i i'm closing my fucking phone off i'm done i'm not i'm not even gonna look so this morning when i woke up i'm like oh i have to go check and sure i mean dallas did what they needed to do and they took care of business and and, and cali but uh it was, it was but it wasn't like, it wasn't easy the shark scored three goals in the second period you know yeah. so it wasn't like it wasn't like a six three drumming 
you know, and and the Sharks did this to the to the Stars the other day or a couple of weeks ago, didn't they? Yeah, they blow, yeah. like a, a four goal lead on them, and, and Stars came back. San Jose was winning six three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just it was yeah it was it, it was wild, and, and you know it just goes back to showing you that even the shitty teams need to win too, and they they will win thirty or forty percent of the time. It's about finding when those wins are going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's what separates you know, good cappers from great cappers because you can't pick the favorites every night. Obviously we hit a lot of underdog picks this year, Bernsey. And, uh, you know, we've done really well with the Chicago underdogs. I feel like we see, uh, the Blackhawks well, and, uh, you know, they can, they're not a very good team, but they still find ways to win. We love our plus money for sure, man. Now let's get in to what we got going on. Small card tonight. We only got two games going on. Uh, we're going to start off with Ottawa in Buffalo. Sens are the dogs here. They're got their plus 115. Sabres at home, minus 135. Over under set here at six and a half. Um, starting with the Sens. Sens are four, five, and one in their last 10, with the over hitting seven times. But they've only scored about 2.8 goals per game. But their power play has been a little nasty at, at almost 28%. Uh, seven for the last 21, they've ended up getting a power play goal. They put three power play goals up against Edmonton. Um, and they've been averaging 31 shots per game. So offense is there for Ottawa. And it's always been there for Ottawa. It always has been. What hasn't been there is defense. <laughs> you know, they, they have firepower up front. They can score goals. You got a lot of mature players in that Ottawa lineup that, that could put the puck in the net. And, you know, I, I made a point in the in the uh, I went live earlier on Instagram just to talk about a few things. And why doesn't Ottawa call up their their goalie the next guy in line? Like, I don't who is it? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what their AHL looks like. I don't know what that team looks like. I don't know. Maybe it's just that bad. Well, but why not? Because Ottawa's biggest issue has been goaltending. Corpus has been very very subpar same with Forsberg why not go to the AHL and call one of these guys up why not give them the chance you're not making it you're not making it why don't you start giving these players time in the NHL when it doesn't matter get their confidence up you have a goaltending problem start to find a solution right now when it doesn't matter because when the puck drops next year you, you're O and O, and you get to start over. So I don't understand why teams like Ottawa uh, don't make these call ups to the minors to to try to address some of the issues. Like Arizona did it yesterday, and we all saw what happened with uh, you know uh, young Doan there. I forget his name, but Shane Doan's son. He had an electric game. He scores his mm, first goal. Goals. He had like six shots on net, and I meant to say that on uh, yesterday. I meant to like you know what first game. Dad's in the house. Dad's roots. You know, the, he had the tarps off in the in the box. You know, love to see it. You know, awesome. I love Shane Doan. You know, he's a Canadian guy. He was always a big Shane Doan kind of fan. It's a shame that nothing really came of him as far as winning goes. But, uh, you know, why aren't these teams being more interactive into the minors to address that the issues that they have in the lineup today? Well, I mean, I will say something about Corpus Allo. I mean, like he's two eight and two eight and two over his last ten with a three oh six and an eight nine five. But in his last five, he's got four victories. He's gotten that goals against un, below three, right? He's at ninety percent save percentage. I mean, I see a lot of, of of what I see in Ottawa. I see a lot of it in New Jersey too. You know, they have the high power offense skill, but their defense and tendies just suck. And then you look at a game like yesterday for New Jersey. Where they were outshot twenty-two to seven in the first period, but somehow Jake Allen stands on his head, gives his team a chance, only lets in one goal, and then Devils wind up coming away with a six-three victory. So it does all matter with what's between the pipes. So I, I agree with you. You gotta, you gotta find out if you know Corpus Allo is not your fucking answer, then get him the fuck out of there. But he's our answer tonight. Well, yeah, very, very much so. Uh, it, it could be. Um, but the other interesting thing is, is like, yeah, okay, he's played better, but his season, he's an 888 goalie. Yeah. That is well below average. And if you're below average goaltending, you're not making the playoffs. It's just, it's simple math. Go look at the stats of the teams that are in the playoffs. 
they don't have 0.888 save percentage. And if they do, they have another goalie that is in the 900s. I think the average is like 902, 903, but Ottawa has Forsberg at 0.885. <laughs> so they've been equally as shit. And, you know, they, they both got a lot of games under their belt because the, the, the coaching staff is constantly bounced from one to the other to try to find an answer. And it just didn't happen for the Senators this year. Well, they're going to Corpus Solid tonight. He's got a little bit of a hot streak. And, you know, both of these two teams are a little bit of streaky teams that we've seen throughout the season. I mean, unfortunately, my wagon of a Buffalo team, the wheels have fallen off. They're not going to be making a push towards the playoffs. Uh, they're four, five, and one as well in their last 10 with the undercashing seven times. Buffalo has been scoring uh, 3.2 goals per game while allowing 2.9. They have one crappy power play, man. It's under 12% in the last 10 games. But to your point about goaltending, we got UPL between the pipes tonight. He's three and two in his last five, two, eight, three, and a nine, oh, eight. Is UPL going to be the difference in this game tonight? I think a lot of this game is going to come down to goaltending. And, you know, if history has showed us anything, UPL has had a much better, arguably the best second half of a season from a goaltending perspective, minus maybe Charlie Lindgren. He's been one of the best goalies in the NHL over the last month, month and a half. So uh, if if he plays his game and he does his job, I, I think he's going to have a, a, a good game um, and, and shut down the sense. It's, it's, it's just, again, like you said it earlier, there are two very streaky teams that have good games and bad games, and the bad games are always bad enough to not win, where teams like Boston can have a bad game and still scrape together an ugly win sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are not those teams at all, man. So I, I do think at the end of the day, it is going to be a little tough to pick out um, a straight-up winner here. I mean, you can maybe find some value on a little bit of a send streak coming in here at plus money as a road dog. Um, you know, you can stick with – I mean, Buffalo's got a pretty decent home record. They like playing at home. Um, but, you know, as far as the prop side of it, I got my eye on Tage Thompson and Alex, Alex Tuck. Both have points in their last five straight games. I'm going to put those guys uh, together for any time points. Um, also like the old man Giroux here. Right. So he had two goals and an assist the last time he played Buffalo. And he's got points in six of his last eight. Um, and then you can kind of keep your eye on, you know, the, the names. Keep your eye on Kachuk. He's got back to back, uh, uh, back to back two point games. Batheson had a goal and two assists against Edmonton. Um, but I think I'm going to wind up ending up with, with, uh, Buffalo with Tage Thompson and Alex Tuck on that parlay. Yeah. And I dropped, uh, Tage Thompson when I went live on Instagram. You know, the guy's, the guy's been an absolute beast and he's kind of had a weird year, but I still think he's, uh, you know, he's still, you know, very much a point per game kind of guy. I think he could even score in this one. All right, on to the second game we got tonight. We got the Bruins coming off a, a hell of a win yesterday against Florida in Tampa. It's a tough road matchup. Boston is 7-3, and 3 versus Tampa in their last 10 uh, meetings. Boston overall is 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. Big night last night for Pavel Zaka and Pasta. Um, both had a goal and an assist. Now, I'm definitely keeping my eye on Zaka here. You can find some value for him. I mean, he's only been held off the score sheet in three games in this entire month of March. Loves playing with that pasta, shells it over, pasta shells it back. Uh, we got Allmark starting here. He's been okay. 3-2-5, two, and 2-6-2, two, two, nine oh six in his last. Uh, what did you see out of the bees last night, and how do you think momentum is going to pull into tonight? I saw a very, very physical game. Like these are two teams that got beef with each other because of what happened in the playoffs last mm -hmm. year, right? Like Florida pulls off the upset and robs Boston of that second round berth, even though they had the best winning record in the entire NHL history. I history. think it was. Yes. Right. So uh, I, I expected a very physical game, but what physical games do is they wear you down as well. They take a lot more out of you. Uh, being hit, it's exhausting. Hitting is exhausting. It's a big part of the game. And I, I think I have to give a little bit of an edge to Tampa here because they're at home. Uh, they've had a day of rest. That physicality in the Florida game might catch up to Boston a little bit. Uh, you know, you always got to wonder what the players are going through. Luckily for Boston, it's it's not a long travel day. 
Uh, I don't know how far it is from it a three hour uh, drive. Yeah, it's 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 around the corner. These guys so. ain't driving. No, no chance. So um, it, it's 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 a tough one. But Boston's starting to shape up now. They're starting to grind a little better. But again, they have a hard time getting pucks to the net. And it, all, all year they've seemed to just struggle to get shots on net. Like their last four games, they haven't had more than 26 shots on net. It, it just seems like an, a number that's too low, and yet they still find ways to win. So uh, what's the answer here? How are they getting – how are they the team that they are when they average, you know, 25 to 28 shots on goal? I mean, well, this is this is a little bit of comparison and, and a weird little anomaly between both of these guys here. I mean, in the last 10 games, Florida has averaged 25.7 shots per game and has scored 3.3 goals per game Tampa's got a weird one as well where they've scored over four goals per game but they don't shoot any more than 24 shots on average it's the same thing I don't understand so I mean like Tampa Tampa's caught a little bit of a little bit of fire over the last little stretch they're seven one and two with a cat with a over cash in seven times um you know vazzy has been been playing stronger Right, he's six two and two, a two nine one. We want to get that goals that that goals against down a little bit. Eight nine seven save percentage. I I mean, this is a game that I can see maybe ends up on the backs of special teams here. I mean, Tampa. It's only three teams in in the entire league that take more penalties than Tampa, but even though they take so many, their their penalty kills ninety one percent over the last ten games. But when you got pasta out there and the hot streak that he's going on right now, I I don't know if that 91 is going to hold up tonight. You definitely want to stay out of the box against uh you know Boston. That's no doubt about it. They can they can be very dangerous on the power play, but we've seen periods over this year where that Boston power play has really struggled. And it, it's funny how it goes because even, you know, similar to Pittsburgh where you got all the talent in the world on the power play and yet you can't produce anything like the, you know, Pittsburgh went wet. Like it was fucking three months without a power play goal. It was historical. And that wasn't what Boston did, but Boston definitely struggled in, in getting power play production. And I get it. Teams go through that. And I, I think Boston is getting it figured out. I think this is a team that gets better as the season goes on. Uh, you know, getting closer to playoffs, I think they just, you know, they find ways to get it done. And, you know, it's important that they continue to get good goaltending because, uh, you know, to go deep in anything, you really got to lie on your goaltending. And, uh, you know, it's been a couple question marks for the goaltending for Boston lately. Uh, you know, it's kind of a weird prop here, but both the goalies are over under 25 and a half saves tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. And it looks like the line is being adjusted that Tampa is going to be having more control of this game because Allmark is at a minus 130 for the over and Vasilevsky is at a minus 130 for the under. So they're suggesting that Tampa might be, you know, kind of all over uh a Boston in here because usually these lines are about minus 120 a piece and to have that move in both ways, you know, I kind of I kind of don't mind having Allmark over 25 and a half saves. I, I think I think Tampa could put a few extra shots than their their regular average just because of it being a back-to-back -back spot. Yeah, I mean, uh, Boston played a heavy game yesterday. I mean, you, a lot of times we sit here and say like, oh, back to back, they're going to come out with heavy legs. Maybe look at the other team as the first time goal scorer, you know, things like that. But I feel like over the last couple of weeks, and I know we're late into the season, but I feel like anytime we looked at a back to back matchup, the ones that were on the back to back actually came out a little faster in the first period and then oh, kind like, of fizzled out like Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe those guys. Maybe yeah. those guys. Like three goals in the first period. Yeah, no, I mean, the back to back doesn't solve the, your question of, oh, they're going to lose because it's a back to back. It's not necessarily true. What we're trying to find is, is an edge and a, a, a team that doesn't play on a back to back always has an edge to win the game. Doesn't matter who it is just because of two nights and two games in the NHL 
especially physical games because they they take the toll out of you. You know, it's 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 lucky the game has changed for goalies where now you know you know Marty Brodeur used to play what seventy five games a year. Yep. Uh, now you rarely ever see your starting goalie play back to back nights. So it kind of changes things when when you know the game is transformed so that that backup goalie is playing on those second of those back to backers. So it, it, it's changed a lot. So you got you got to take that as a consideration when you're placing a bet, but I wouldn't be dumping money on every team. Oh, the other team's playing a back to back. We got to move our money on the team that's rested. It doesn't always work. It almost didn't work for us last night in Nashville. Uh, mm-hmm. And it, it, it it's it's burned us a couple times this year doing that with that mentality, but you got to look at what Tampa Bay is also doing lately. And they've been red hot, like you said. So, you know, you, you put it all together and you know what? Tampa Bay should be winning this game, uh, but the game's got to get played on the ice. Yeah. I mean, like when you look at that Tampa roster and you try to take a prop angle out of it, I mean, there's just so many different options that you can go on, man. I mean, obviously Kucherov is as automatic as it comes. He just had a 13 game point streak snapped against Anaheim. Um, Anthony Duclair, new addition, possibly the, the, the deadline move of the season. He's had a point in every single game that he's had a lightning sweater on, uh, Braden point does nothing but score goals. He's got three, uh, in the, uh, six of the last eight, he's gotten points. Um, he's got goals in three straight, uh, stammer Stamkos had a 14, uh, 14, an eight game point streak snapped where he totaled 14 points, um, against that Anaheim. So, I mean, like, there's just firepower galore, man. I mean, I, it, I'm i with you. The numbers say that Tampa should be taking this home. They say that, you know, uh, on the rest, back-to-back against Boston, who played a heavy game last night, tons of firepower. Allmark's going to get tested. I mean, we 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 could still – we could either see a real tight-checking, slow-paced game or a full-tilt shootout, and I'm hoping for a fucking shootout. You know what? It's it's kind of weird from a betting perspective that Tampa's only a minus one fifteen in this spot. Okay, the the two teams they're not that far away in the standings. Uh, Tampa has been the better team. You know they've won seven of ten. Where Boston is, you know, six and four, not as good. This is their third game on the road. I kind of expected tampa to be a, like a minus 125 minus 130 here so i don't know if we're missing something or or not bernsey but i think a tampa at minus 115 is a, is a pretty good price yeah a little bit of a steal especially because i mean you know how i feel about boston i'm not completely sold on them i don't think that they are a complete show you know especially how weak they are up the middle i mean i i've been proved wrong before We'll see if it keeps going that way. I mean, they shut me up last night. I was all over the cats. But we'll see what goes on in the Bay. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. Just two games for tonight. Best of luck here with everything going on. Don't forget to get over to whylose.com. Grab that $99 week package. Get on that Canadian bacon. That sucker's been cashing, cherry picking all night long. Get over and check out our Telegram, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Let's talk to the guys. Yeah, we talked live already today, and I know we had a, we had over 100 people on their live chat. I like getting on live every day, guys, so usually around the afternoon, 2 o'clock, 2.30, if you're, you got some time and you're, you want to throw your AirPods in while you get your workout in or something and hear me blab about sports betting and, and, and all, all that shit in general, tune into that. I give a lot of more insight of how we come up with these games and how we how we rank these games. Uh, and you know, that's such a big part of this. So make sure you have a unit system. You keep, you keep to that unit system that way, when things don't work out the way you think you still got lots of money to play with, you know, nobody's asking anybody to, you know, put their head out and take big risks here. We want to keep our risks small with a big reward on, on, you know, and roll over that day over and over and over again. And that's what gets us green at the end of the month, which is all that matters is what it's like on day 30 of the month. There's going to be red days, but if that number is green at the end of the month, you've had a good month. I don't care who you are. All right, guys. Enjoy the hockey tonight. We got a bunch of more games on for tomorrow, so we'll be back over here to you. Take care of yourselves. Have some fun.